Hey everyone, it's Sean and it's Sunday, so it's time for story time. Um, I have a really, really, really cool guest for this uh, week's story. Um, it was by special request from a little boy named Sean, so same name as me. Uh, apparently he loves insects and wanted me to feature an insect on today's story. So I have with me the Devil's Flower Mantis, uh, the Diabolica. This is one of the largest species of mantids in the world once they're full grown. Females can reach upwards of just over five inches long, which is pretty big for an insect. Um, if you know much about mantises, they're a very, very interesting little creature. Um, they have some of the best eyesight out of any animals on the planet. Uh, they can basically see in 180 degree radial vision. So this allows them to spot their prey items and also potential predators from long distances and multiple angles without really having to show themselves. Most of them have really, really unique camouflage. This one, it's a little bit hard to see the camouflage because it's not full grown. But when the devil's flower mantis is an adult, it will be white with fuchsia, purple, pink, and bright white features all over its body to basically look like a flower. And it can hold uh, its hands up and then also these kind of like sail looking things on its back to make itself look like a flower and then an insect will come to land on it and it catches it with those big forearms that she keeps stretching out, trying to hit my finger every now and then. They're actually really intelligent insects. And I know we don't think of insects as being intelligent, but these guys are pretty amazing. So they're one of my favorite mantises. Um, they come from Africa. We have mantises all over the world, but Africa has some of the coolest looking ones and obviously Diabolica is absolutely amazing. I love its head. She keeps tilting her head and looking at me and checking out different things and trying to figure out if I'm a predator or not. So I don't really have a good book for story time that is about insects. So I decided that we would read one about animals that love insects, bats. So this one's called Bats in the Band. And just so you know, I may end up having to put the mantis down back into its enclosure while I'm reading because as you can see, she kind of goes everywhere. So can I get you back on my other hand? Let me hold you up like that. Are you gonna be more comfortable? Can you stay there? All right. So Bats in the Band <laughs> by Caldecott. Oh, sorry, I'm completely reading the, the name wrong. It's kind of hard to tell who this one is by. Written and illustrated by Brian Lies. For some reason, they have a bunch of different stuff on the cover. So I make mistakes every once in a while. That's why I do these videos in one shot so you guys can see that mistakes are okay. We all make mistakes, we learn from them, and we move on. So, all right, that's in the band. In hibernation we rest, asleep through icy months of storm, still, still, huddled together and waiting for weather to warm. But as the wicked winter thaws, we stretch our wings and shake our claws. Hunger drives us to the air, we've got to eat, no time to spare. We sing for our supper in brightening mood, swooping and diving, refining our food. There isn't a menu, we play it by ear, chirping and chasing the echoes we hear. But each of us senses that something's not right, and then when a bugle blast shatters the night, that one lonely note tells us just what is wrong. We're hungry for sound, we've been silent too long. Relief on our faces is easy to read. A little night music is exactly what we need. little mantis friend is trying to get away and every last one of us knows where to go a summertime theater after a show we're chasing each other come on look alive nobody wants to be the last to arrive but as we approach it there aren't many lights we can't be mistaken we know it's tonight we circle above then a window's thrown wide it lights up the lawn and leads us inside
We swoop through the window, ignoring the bats, offering t-shirts, posters, and hats. A musical feast waits us within. Why would we stop? We can't wait to begin. fine. Lots of people like to walk through here, but that's okay. The space we fly into is warm and inviting. We set up the stages and fiddle with lighting. Some bats have instruments perfect in size. Others without them will just improvise. Behind the stage curtain, they're getting in tune, making up things out of straws, out of spoons. Other bat instruments come from afar like curly horns, bagpipes, or a dreamy st sitar. And then when a bugle blast echo echoes once more, we stop what we're doing and flock to the floor. The conductor approaches, he lifts his baton. We all take a breath and the concert is on. You are so active. We sing together as one voice. It seems the very walls rejoice. All together, rafter singing. It's as though our souls are singing. Then violins, viola, cello, change the mood to sweet and mellow. If you hadn't seen a bat quartet, you really ain't seen nothing yet. The one bat band plays many things at once with feet and breath and wings. And though we think that this bat's inspired, watching leaves us feeling tired. Next up, there's a country song. Some lonesome bat done something wrong. He's gone and broken someone's heart. Now everything has come apart. In a corner tucked away and far from where the others play, there's something for the younger set who can't sit through a concert yet. Over there, a singer cries of lonely days and empty skies. Her feelings fill the room with blue and soon we find we're crying too. It's hard to figure, eyes get wetter. So how is it that we feel better? Our little mantis is still just crawling around all over. Now on the main stage, there's a hum of air guitars and blazing drums. Hearts are pumping, drums are thumping, everything that's loose is jumping. Can others hear us? We don't care. Let our spirits fill the air. Everybody joins the beat, clapping wings and stomping feet. We bounce, we hop, we twirl, we groove. The music makes our bodies move. But daylight through the window says it's time for us to go. So every bat who's willing the crowds the stage to end our show. The music soars, finale's here, the ending of the song. It builds and builds, now here it comes. It's going, going. Gong. Then the shimmering vibrations dwindle down and fade and silence fills our ears as loud as anything we played. A weary cheer, there's nothing more, but no one wants to leave. Our music was a gift we gave and one that we received. But finally we've got to go, we stretch and wave goodbye. Worn out, wrung out, half asleep, we greet the morning sky. Heading for home, we hum or we sing and discover there's music in everything. The roar of a car, the bark of a pup, the sound of the rest of the world is waking up. But our night is over, the summons of sleep is pulling us downward drowsy and deep. 
And as we nod off, the last thing we hear is the sound of our hearts beating time in our ears. And though we stay silent all through the day, up in the rafters and sleeping, we sway. It's not our intention, but you understand, we're dreaming of being bats in the band. So that was a really cool book, kind of giving a fun twist on how bats actually hunt for things like insects, which they really want to eat mantises. They like flying insects, so they actually eat lots of mosquitoes. A colony of bats can eat hundreds of pounds of mosquitoes in one night. But the idea of them being in a band lets you know how much they use sound to hunt and echolocate so they can tell where objects are and that helps them fly around. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed our awesome mantis friend, the devil's flower mantis, also known as the diabolica. And we will see you next time. So have a good night.